Western Wildcats have defeated the defending Rose Bowl champion Nittany Lions of Penn State by a score of 21 to 10. And in doing so, they become just the third team in college football history to defeat Notre Dame, Michigan, and Penn State in the same season. Well, that was the scene on Saturday at Dyke Stadium as the fifth-ranked Northwestern Wildcats and their fans celebrated a 21-10 victory over the defending Rose Bowl champion Penn State Nittany Lions. And welcome, everybody, to the Gary Barnett Show, the head coach of those Northwestern Wildcats. And, uh, Coach, you look to the calendar to set the tone going into this game. I thought uh, the analogy was perfect, uh, Dave, and I, I, I wanted to just sort of breathe a little more confidence into our players. And as I looked at it and saw that the first weekend in September, uh, we had beaten uh, Notre Dame in South Bend. And first weekend in October, we had beaten Michigan in Ann Arbor. And I thought it was just fitting that the first week in November that we take on Penn State and, and uh, finish, finish the formula. You've said that it's hard to improve when you start out at a high level as you did against Notre Dame, but this team seems to be getting better every week. Well, you have to in this conference, um, and you really build as a team for November. Uh, that's when uh, uh, championships are crowned. That's when uh, the, the, you do the things that people remember. They, we have a saying that says they forget what you do in September and they only remember what you do in November. And so if that's the kind of team we wanted to become, then this was a fitting start and a fitting challenge for us. One of the things you said you wanted was a hostile environment for the visiting teams when they come in here to Evanston. You got your wish. Uh, it was terrific. I'm not, I, you know, I, as many things have happened to our kids all year, the thing I think that they are most excited about and most pleased with is the crowd that we had against Penn State. Uh, I just can't tell you what a difference it made in their play and their attitude and how they felt about the whole thing. Well, we're here in the weight room. We're going to come back and we will pump you up with some Northwestern Penn <laughs> State highlights as we continue. You like that? I see you pump, Dave. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show. We're coming to you this week from the weight room of the Nicolette Football Center. Gary, everybody talks about how much stronger, bigger your players have become. I know some of the bigger has come from the training table up in the end club, but the stronger has come here. Larry Lilge is our strength coach, uh, Dave, and he's just done an unbelievable job. And I think uh, one of the things that happens is um, uh, the way he treats and handles our players uh, when they when they get here they just believe so much in him and the older guys tell our younger guys says if you just do what Larry tells you uh, then you're gonna be strong enough to play in this league and and that's what they do they they believe in Larry and Larry does a great job of getting them ready well you need to be big and strong to go up against Penn State as the biggest team uh, that I've ever played against I think I, I, I think Penn State probably Ohio State looks like they're about the same size in the offensive line but that was very, very physical football team. Those two fullbacks were really good players. And, uh, you know, I, I really give our kids a lot of credit for, for being able to play with them, stand toe to toe, and, and go against a team of that size and that talent. Well, let's take a look. The Wildcats and the Nittany Lions first half action. The Wildcats emerge from a tunnel of smoke to take the field against the Nittany Lions at Penn State before the second consecutive sellout crowd at Dyke Stadium. First series of the game, Gary, your first third down. Well, we came out throwing. Uh, day we wanted to throw, and that's a great shot to uh, D uh, Dwayne Bates and uh, about 12 yards. And then you'll see Steve hit uh, Darren Drexler. This is a well done between those two guys and great protection. Drexler with three catches on the afternoon early in the game. Now, here's a second down play with Darnell Autry. This is a uh, nine-yard pickup, and uh, we just we just wanted to come out and mix things up early. And this is a touchdown run by uh, Darnell. Great block in there by Matt Hartle and uh, Mike McGrew. And we get our first drive. I think it was uh, 12 plays and took up about six minutes of the clock. 73 yards, and the Wildcats had a 7 to nothing lead. And now the defense. Here's stuff stopping uh, Bobby Engram. It's a nice play by Eric Collier and then uh, Chris Martin uh, and William Bennett rallying to the ball. Well, look at Autry here. Tough running by Darnell. Well, he knocks uh, uh, free safety over number three, Herring. He's a good player, but 
Uh, and this is another uh, 17 or 18 yard run by Darnell, and we're really getting some nice creases in there by our offensive line. Second quarter, a seven to nothing game. Penn State goes three and out on their first possession of the uh, second quarter. Here's the third down stop. This is a great play by uh, Pat uh, Fitzgerald. Pat had uh, 17 tackles, I think, uh, in this game. And outstanding performance. That sets up this play. Daryl Kenya of Penn State punting to Brian Musso. Well, Brian picks this up and uh, takes it back for 23 yards and uh, this was a, a very very big play and we, we've been trying to get our special teams more involved especially our punt return. We just haven't had very many kick to us and Brian's really a good player in that particular area. Well he's also a good player on the receiving end here on this third down play on the ensuing drive. This little drag route we put in for this game and uh, Brian does a nice job picking it up and uh, getting a lot of yards after he caught the ball. Darnell Autry on the way to the end zone for the second time. Another nice job by our offensive line. Darnell makes a free safety miss and uh, we're in the end zone for a second score. Now it's 14 to nothing in favor of the Wildcats midway through the second quarter. Penn State on offense in the first turnover of the day. This was really well played by Chris Martin as you can see. Casey Daly throws a great block right here. I don't know if you can see it but uh, it was tremendous play and Chris went up and played that big time. Wildcats with the ball at the Penn State 39 and now a, a pass play to Dwayne Bates again. Great play by Steve Schnur. They had a blitz on and uh, he read it, picked it up and uh, avoided a rush and stuck it in there and then uh, Brian Goins misses his field goal. He just miss, miss, uh, read the wind I think and gives the ball back to uh, Penn State and you see they hand the ball off to Milne, their big fullback and uh, he creases for about 18 yards there. They move it down to the five yard line and on third down and Wally Richardson hits the tight end Keith Olsimer. Well that's a nice play and uh, they dink the ball down on us. It was a nice drive by Penn State and we're going in ahead 14 to seven. Gary, going into halftime, had you felt that the momentum had changed a little bit at the end of the half? I was concerned that it had, Dave. Um, I felt like we were we were so emotionally high for this game, probably the highest that I've seen us. And, and I was a little concerned uh, when we went out and scored twice that we might play ourselves out. And that it, when you score too fast sometimes, uh, you let your guard down. And I was concerned that uh, that score that Penn State put on the board right at the end of the first half was going to give us that scenario. So. Uh, I prepared some things at halftime, as did our coaches, to handle that. Well, we'll take a look at the second half action between the Wildcats and the Nittany Lions as we continue on the Gary Barnett Show. We played an, a, a really good football team. Yeah, I think that's a problem. People just can't believe Northwestern's that good. They just, or they don't want to believe, but they are that good. They are a fine football team. And the people are start giving them some credit. Penn State coach Joe Paterno with some words of praise for the Wildcats. And uh, coach, he's said some nice things about you and your program before. He has, and, uh, but Dave, Joe Paterno, uh, there's, he's one of two guys that have uh, meant a lot to me. Bill McCartney and then Joe Paterno, what he's done for college football, uh, the consistency and the continuity that, that he brings to just the whole sport, um, his level of integrity, uh, he's the model. I mean, there is none better than Joe Paterno. And uh, for him to say that we have a team that he would like, reminds him of the teams that he's had in the past. That says a lot, and that's about as high a compliment as I could receive. Well, let's pick up the second half action with the Wildcats leading 14 to seven. Penn State gets the ball to start the second half, Gary, and your defense comes up big early on. Well, it's a big play by Matt Rice. You know, they had this ball forever in the third quarter. We only had it for three plays, and uh, they did a good job. This is Ray Roby getting great push on the center and causing a quarterback sack, and uh, they punt the ball to us here, Dave, and it was so noisy that uh, Matt Stewart could not hear Brian uh, Musso telling him to get out of the way, and the ball hits. Matt uh, right in the back and they recover and it puts them in a uh, great field goal position, a great scoring position. This is great coverage too. Dave Schmeley comes all the way from the other field, other side of the field makes this tackle, but he couldn't do that if we didn't have great coverage on those receivers. Tim Sharp also in on that one. Now Northwestern back on offense and Steve Schnur on third down. Nearly a big play to Dwayne Bates. 
great throw. Dwayne almost makes a tremendous catch on it, and that, that really would have been a, a great play for us to have at that time, a critical play for us, but they get the ball back, and this is a great catch by Ingram. You know, Ingram played with a broken hand in that game, and that, that's just uh, what, what a lot of courage. Now they move it down to the 19, and then Richardson sacked here by Ismaili. Great game by Hudefi. You know, he's from Pennsylvania, and this really meant a lot for him. And They try to kick a field goal here, and it goes just wide. And it was close, but the official's right underneath the pole, and he says it's wide right away. And So we really dodged a bullet there. Northwestern responds with an 80-yard drive here, and here's the key play on the drive. This is a great call by Greg Meyer, our coordinator. This little reverse we put in for this game, and Dave Beasley comes up with it. You know, Dave's had a big play against these guys all three years that he's played against them. 74-yard touchdown a couple of years ago against Penn State. Eventually down to the 24. This is second down, and here's Autry setting the season rushing record. Great run. Hops over two of our players. Looks like to me he gets in there, but the official has a better view than I did. And, and uh, he's disappointed that he didn't get it in, but he's going to come right back and little power play, good block up front, and he walks in, and uh, we've got it. 21 to 10 now in favor of the Wildcats in the fourth quarter of play at Dyke Stadium. And Penn State was to find the going tough against the Northwestern defense. A uh, great play by Danny Sutter and uh, Pat Fitzgerald. It's uh, you know, just plugging a linebacker there, really, really good solid football play. A rare interception here thrown by Schnur. Well, Steve knows better than to throw back across his body on this, and he's had two interceptions uh, this year that are just like that, and nobody hates it worse than he did, and, and he won't let that happen again. But again, your defense, Gary, will step up here with Pat Fitzgerald. Yeah, I think Pat called his own number there. I think he had trouble reading Vandy signs, and he called a play for him to blitz on, and he got the sack, and that, that was a big play. And then right here is a great call by our defense. It was a spy play, and... Uh, Keith Lazowski sits out there waiting for the screen, makes a tackle, and that pretty much salts the game away. That was Penn State's final offensive play, and the final score, Northwestern 21, Penn State 10. The celebration is on. So, Coach, as we look at the final stats, 232 yards of offense for Penn State. Well, that, this was a good old-fashioned war, Big Ten war between two good defenses, and uh, they had been averaging well over 460 yards a game, and we held them to 232, and uh, that was significant, obviously. Uh, I think our, our edge in rushing helped. I think probably what helped as much as anything is that we allowed no sacks. And our third down uh, conversion percentage was 45%, which is up from what we've been. I, I really uh, think that improvement was critical in the outcome of that game. Well, let's go back to Dyke Stadium and catch some of the post-game reaction to the Wildcats victory. Well, I told them keep their heads up. Don't be ashamed, though. We, I, I told them just what I told you. We get beaten by a better football team tonight. We, we gave it our best shot. We did everything we could. Couldn't come up with a play, and they did. You know, hats off to them. It seemed like at key times during this game, again, your defense came up with big plays. Oh yeah, that's that's um that's our motto. We got to make a couple of big a couple of big plays every game, and we should and we will end up winning the game. So. Defense came up big, like like usual, like they sh like we should. Darnell, how about the three touchdowns today? It's exciting. It was good. It was good stuff. And uh, I would all the linemen and fullbacks and uh, t wide receivers blocking and tight ends. I mean, they're just they were doing a hell of a job today. Put this uh, winning streak in perspective for us, if you can. I probably call it madness. I mean, look at all you guys all over the place here. This was never like this before in the past, and. It's fun, but at the same time, it, 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 we have to stay focused. And we got two weeks left, and the, the, you know the main thing right now is the Iowa Hawkeyes. And uh, you know they're going to be coming in here. They got I think it's like 22 years they've beaten us in a row, and uh, it's time to get the monkey off our back. That man, Pat Fitzgerald, was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week for the third time this season. Coming up next, we'll visit with the Wildcats' strong safety, Eric Collier, and also take a look at tailback Darnell Autry as we continue on the Gary Barnett Show. How am I doing, Coach? <laughs> well, you're going to need help here pretty soon, David. Hands it off. Autry right side to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown! 18-yard touchdown run for Darnell Autry. Western defense this year has been the play of the secondary. And the only new starter back there this season is strong safety Eric Collier from Dixon, Illinois. And Eric, you've got some veterans around you, Rodney Ray, Chris Martin, William Bennett. That has to have helped you make the adjustment. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, our secondary is a great, you know, one of the best secondaries in the Big Ten. 
I think uh, Chris Martin and Rodney are definitely, you know, the two best corners in Big Ten, and uh, Williams probably the one of the best, if not the best, safety in the in the nation. You've established yourself as a real hard hitter. Is that something you enjoy? The real the real uh, bell ringers. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, where I play, you know, puts me in a position, you know, catch a running back off guard. You know, I like to, you know, bring it in there and bring it as you know best I can. This was a big performance by the defense against one of the top offenses in the nation in Penn State, and that had to be quite a tribute to you guys. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, our, our defensive line did a great job along with our linebackers. They're putting a lot of pressure on uh, Wally Richardson, you know, making it hard for him to complete passes and stuff, and uh, they just stopped the run completely. <coughs> I mean, it's just a, a great overall uh, defensive uh, tag. Eric, you've had some big moments this year, three interceptions, including the one that set up the go-ahead touchdown at Michigan. What's been the highlight of the season for you? Uh, I think it's probably the Notre Dame game when we get to you know, assert ourselves as a, you know, a team to be reckoned with. And it let us know that you know, we'd actually come to play, and it's let the nation know that you know, Northwestern's a team to be reckoned with. Well, this has to be a special game for you this week. Iowa, you're from Dixon, which is not all that far from the Iowa border. Yeah, it's not far, actually. And, uh, I actually have a friend whose family is really uh, close with Iowa, and we're always betting in the past couple of years you know, if we're going to win or if they're going to win. And, I mean, it's just going to be great to actually be in a position to take, you know, take control of this game. Maybe you'll get bragging rights this time. Oh, definitely. Eric, thank you. Congratulations on a great season. Thanks. Eric Collier, the Wildcats' strong safety. Now, running back Darnell Autry has already made a name for himself in the Northwestern record books. Mike Adamley. Bob Christian. Dennis Lundy. Now, Darnell Autry. Darnell is well on his way to becoming the most prolific running back in Northwestern history. I don't know how many yards Ultra had, but I had to guess it, I would say 425. Thank God I don't play against him. That kid runs so hard. Schnur gives to Autry. Right side cuts back left. 30, 35, 40 in open field. The 45, the 50. There he goes. The 35, the 30 angling right. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5. Into the end zone. Yes, it is. Touchdown. If there's a seam, he'll take it. And he's got real good acceleration, very fine back, hard runner. A lot of respect for him. Good football player. He can take a hit and keep going, and you know he's he's a he's a great kid. And he he uh he can receive real well too. He's a great receiver. I'd put probably 11 guys in the box and then hope and play man-to-man -man coverage. You know, I'd put nine guys in the box and put, you know, your two corners man-to-man -man and guys on the outside and try and stop him first. And But I don't think you can stop him. He's too good of a player. Schneer hands it off. Autry right side to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown! 18-yard touchdown run for Darnell Autry. If I was a coach, I'd give him the ball every play and let him <laughs> rack up the yards. I just really think run hard. Just run hard and keep, keep my feet moving, uh, break tackles, and then hopefully I can get in the open field and, and turn it on. Coach, 139 yards for Darnell on Saturday, his 10th straight 100-yard game. What sets him apart? Well, two things, Dave. I think one, he's playing with a with a very very good offensive line, and uh, I think that uh, uh, those guys are as happy for Darnell as he is when when he uh, gets a record like that. And then the second thing is Darnell is just a uh, he brings a lot of emotion to the game. He's got a lot of poise and patience. He, he waits. Uh, he knows the difference between the time that he has to hit a crease fast and when he has to wait and let things develop. I think that's a mark of a good back, and he's got the ability, I think, to make you miss, and that, that's the one thing that you can't teach, you can't coach, you just have to recruit it.
Well, he's a guy I know you like having on your side. That's right. We yes. sure do. We will come back and take a look at Saturday's upcoming battle with the Iowa Hawkeyes next on The Gary Barnett Show. Iowa uh, is a game that this team wants so much that I can't even put it in words right now for you. And it has wanted for, for 12 months. And so uh, this is one I know we don't have to look, look, uh, worry about looking beyond. Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show. So your players are anxious to get after the Iowa Hawkeyes this week. Dave, we've struggled. This program has struggled for I don't know how many years, I think 17 years or so with Iowa. And uh, we really felt like last year uh, we went in and uh, you know, we don't blame anyone but ourselves for last year's mess. I mean, we, we had a chance uh, to go in there and do well and we didn't. They played well. Uh, we put the ball on the ground, didn't play very smart. And uh, we were embarrassed. Uh, they played well. And the year before, uh, we really played them here in a tight game and, uh, and lost it. And then uh, the year before that, we really got our noses rubbed in it, and, and they played very well, and we didn't. And so I think uh, just the fact that they've dominated our program for so many years uh, that our guys started talking about this a year ago after we lost the way we did. You faced a lot of great backs this year, and you face another one on Saturday. This uh, Iowa Hawkeye team is a really good football team. They have, uh, you know, they played. Penn State, Ohio State without their best player on the offensive line and, and that hurt them. They put up numbers, they have better numbers in every category than we do you know, on offense. Uh, and defensively, every week they seem to have gotten better and so they got a great punter. We got our work cut out for us, but we're excited about this piece of work. Should be a good one. Good luck on Saturday, Coach. And that will do it for the Gary Barnett Show again Saturday, 11.20 a.m., the kickoff as the Wildcats meet the Hawkeyes. Now for Coach Gary Barnett, I'm Dave Ennett. Thanks for being with us, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Great Central Florida location, three championship golf courses convenient to Disney and Epcot, and the Citrus Bowl. All oh, good Southern California location, convenient to all attractions, close to Pasadena. Dave, you still don't get it. There's only one place right now that you should be thinking about, and that's Iowa.